Maryland has 7,000 miles of Chesapeake Bay shoreline. 18 miles feature stunning cliffs like these, scattered on private and public lands on the western and eastern shores. These special cliffs are home to a tiny state-endangered species, the Puritan tiger beetle. The little insect goes about its curious life ways, oblivious to gathering forces of human controversy and climate change. Because the cliffs face possible extinction, so too do the creatures who exclusively call them home. Calvert Cliff State Park in Calvert County supports more Puritan tiger beetles than any other place in the world. It seems contradictory, but scientists are working to maintain cliffs like these for the beetle by protecting their natural erosion, sometimes a controversial effort. Jim McCann is state zoologist with the Department of Natural Resources. It's important to maintain these cliff habitats and the natural processes, the natural erosional processes that occur here, not only for the beetle, but they provide a set of material that drifts down shore and provides the beach habitat. And they also create sandbars that reduce erosion rates in other shoreline areas. If you remove the natural erosional process, these, these spectacular cliffs would be gone. There are ancient fossil beds here, and other animals use the cliffs too. Including, for example, uh, the, the swallow colonies that nest here every spring. Bald eagles do nest along the forested shorelines above the cliff. Uh, we have flocks of migratory shorebirds that use these areas during their stopovers. And uh, you know, the sandy beaches that occur along this area have a lot of value, not just ecological value, but recreational value. They're great places to take your kids and family. And so it's very important to protect these areas. On the eastern shore, the beautiful Sassafras River forms the boundary between Cecil and Kent counties. Puritan tiger beetles on the cliff sites here have suffered an 80% decline since the early 1990s. Scientists believe encroaching vegetation is destroying the open space needed by this and other species. DNR is working with scientists like Barry Nisley, professor of biology at Randolph-Macon College in Virginia. He surveyed tiger beetles here since the late 1980s. His team is studying its life habits and habitat to learn what is needed to prevent extinction. Now, usually for a species to go extinct, you don't have to drop it down to zero, because once the numbers get down to a small number, then they're doomed. Uh, but what you need are multiple sites, because we have seen that some sites totally disappear and depend on recolonization from another site. Nisley's research shows the beetles need open space for all of its life stages. The adults are kind of like lizards. They're predatory, they use their eyesight, they see something, they dart after it, they feed on it. So they need open ground. The female beetles climb toward the top of the cliffs to lay their eggs. The young, or larval beetles, remain on the cliffs for up to two years. And they anchor themselves into these burrows and stick their head out. They've got these big jaws that something comes by and they just grab very quickly, pull it down and eat it and it depends on things coming into that open area. So the larvae and adults both need open areas. Michael Fenster, a geologist, is associate professor at Randolph-Macon College. We're gonna scrape upwards and take about 40 grams of the sample. The strata on this bluff face dates from the last heyday of the dinosaurs. My particular part of this project involves determining the geologic parameters that are responsible for where beetles live and where beetles don't live. This data will help focus conservation efforts on sites most likely to succeed. 180 PSI. While research continues, scientists are working to save rare open cliff sides on private lands as well to ensure survival of multiple sites around the bay. But private landowners living on top of cliffs are looking to preserve their property from the natural erosion that maintains the tiger beetle habitat. When you stop the natural erosion processes, the cliff faces will, in short order, become vegetated and become unsuitable. The shoreline erosion control structures that some private landowners are interested in uh, represent pr probably the greatest threat to Puritan tiger beetle. Because these insects are federally threatened and state endangered, 
landowners must apply for federal, state, and local permits in order to construct erosion control on cliffs with Puritan tiger beetles. Catherine McCarthy, Southern Region Ecologist with the Wildlife and Heritage Service, DNR, works with shoreline landowners in Calvert County. So we've tried to come up with compromises in the structures that they want to put in that will allow for some erosion in order to maintain the tiger beetle habitat, but reduce the level of erosion to address the homeowner's concerns about the property loss. Mm -hmm. Tony Vida is a resident of Chesapeake Ranch Estates. Since 1996, you know that I've lost uh, at least 20 feet. So it's significant, it's serious, and we're concerned. On behalf of the Homeowners Association, Vida researched breakwaters. The application for a revetment, which is a large rock breakwater right at the base of the cliff, was denied. Environmentally friendly reef balls installed in 2005 dissipate wave energy while allowing some sand to gather, preventing some erosion. The unfortunate part is that uh, with the type of nor'easters that we get in tropical winds, the sand that accretes doesn't stay, so it's partial protection. But uh, we're of the opinion now that we need additional protection. Phyllis Bonfield is another shoreline resident of Chesapeake Ranch Estates. Her property lies 70 feet above the cliffs. We had no erosion until the summer of 03. And over a course of 12 months, we had four slides. And in that time, we also had Hurricane Isabel. We lost a total of 35 feet. Bonfield was permitted to build a nearshore breakwater, which helps break up waves while maintaining beach and open cliffside. But she fears more slides. And at some point, our home might not be sellable. You have to wonder whether it's really in the best interest to try to protect the beetle, to protect the Chesapeake Bay, or to protect, protect property. And we really, um, feel that property should be at the top of the list. Officials like Glenn Theris, head of the Endangered Species Program at DNR, grapple with these difficult choices. There's only about 6,000 Puritan tiger beetles left on the planet, 85% of them here in Maryland. So it's our responsibility as uh, stewards of the planet to keep the species around. Puritan tiger beetles, like a lot of other species, kind of act as uh, canaries in a coal mine, telling us something's going wrong, figure it out. It might affect us as well. Whatever happens here and now, the long-term effects of climate change pose major challenges to both private landowners and public planners, not just in Chesapeake Bay, but around the world. Sea level rise and climate change may have a profound effect on the habitat for this species, and not just the Puritan tiger beetle, but many other rare and common shoreline species. And at this point, we simply don't know what the impact will be.